All right, let the anti-Trump legal spin begin. Despite the growing number of legal experts slamming Alvin Bragg's historic charges against Trump, many folks on the left are actually finding bizarre ways to still make it Trump's fault. Take, for instance, ex instance this op-ed in The New York Times. The author calls Bragg's legal case an embarrassment. But apparently Bragg was provoked into the bad decision because Trump accelerated the erosion of legal norms. Meanwhile, a separate op-ed is tossing out all legal concerns, saying the case is strong. Seriously? Here to set the record straight, former acting Attorney General Matt Whitaker and former acting Director of National Intelligence, Rick Grinnell. Good to see you both. Ambassador to Grinnell, uh, we mentioned these dueling New York Times op-eds. One writes, astonishingly, the district attorney's office filings do not make clear the core crime that would turn the filing misdemeanor into a felony, right? I mean, I, I just don't understand in our country how you possibly charge somebody with a crime that you don't mention. <laughs> because it's all politics. I mean, look, this is the same party, Sean, that uh, is telling us that no one is above the law after they created sanctuary cities, literally cities that will protect people when you break federal law. So the hypocrisy on the left is enormous. We see it, I, I think people everywhere see it. I, look, one of the things that I find really astonishing is that first and second generation Americans are beginning to come over and be conservatives. They're the canaries in the coal mine screaming, what is happening to America? You've got the media that are just regurgitating everything that the ruling party says. There are dictators around the world who are envious of what's happening in Washington, D.C., where the Democrats say one thing, the media follow through, everybody follows. You attack the leader of the ruling party. You try to uh, put them in prison. I mean, the State Department foreign service officers should be at the forefront right now screaming that we just completely got rid of our ability to talk about democracy. Absolutely. Matt, you know, today the House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan, he subpoenaed former New York County Special Assistant District Attorney Matt Mark Pam Pomerantz. He's the guy who wrote the book. Uh, to appear for a deposition in Congress after Pomerantz didn't cooperate with a letter for him to voluntarily provide Congress with information at the direction of the district attorney's office. So let me ask you this. Because he's no longer with the district attorney's office, uh, he did write a public book. Does that kind of mean that he really doesn't have a, a, a way out of testifying now? Well, Sean, it's good to be with you. I love the sport coat. Uh, you know, what we've learned during January 6th is that anybody can be subpoenaed by Congress. Anybody, private citizens like Steve Bannon, Peter Navarro can be held in contempt uh, and prosecuted by a DOJ. And I would expect the same treatment uh, of the other side if the shoe's on the other foot. We know that's not going to happen. But remember, this case is never about actually a conviction. This was all about a potential perp walk. They didn't get it. It was about a mugshot. They didn't get it. It was about the stacking right. of saying he faces 100 years in jail. They got that. Uh, they got the felonies. They are getting the media they want. Whether or not this case is successful, I think the left now feels like they're playing with house money because they've done what no other of these persecutions have done. Both of the impeachments failed. You know, the Russia gate failed. All of these things have failed. And so, you know, at least they feel that they've advanced the ball down the field in this zero sum game of lawfare where politics has now become criminal. It's a shame. Matt, before I get back to Rick, I just want, real quick, because a lot of the folks on the Republican side didn't uh, uh, comply with the subpoenas for January 6th, and I understand that committee had its own issues. Is that a basis for Democrats now saying, well, we're not going to comply with the Republicans who issue subpoenas? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, again, I think it, right. the, the House can selectively enforce their subpoenas. They can refer people over that are held in contempt. And, and I really think that uh, the House caucus, Republican caucus, needs to be willing to vote on the House floor for to hold people in contempt that don't show up. Ambassador Grinnell, I, I do want to switch gears because th today the Biden administration was asked and had this review come out about Afghanistan. Um, and it kind of plays into your wheelhouse as the acting uh, director of national intelligence, because the, the review comes out about this batch, botched withdrawal, and it blames Trump. It blames Trump and says that the withdrawal, even though Biden had been president 
and that Biden made the call that the conditions were created by his predecessor, i.e. Trump. What do you make of that? Well, let's just review one thing. Anthony Blinken, who's our Secretary of State, and Averill Haynes, who is the Director of National Intelligence, both were the deputies to Susan Rice during the Obama administration, when Susan Rice was National Security Advisor. Both of them were deputies to Susan. Susan is controlling both intelligence and diplomacy right now. From behind the curtain, there are very few uh, journalists willing to scrutinize her. She is running all of these uh, departments. Both of those individuals who run those departments owe their entire political career to Susan Rice. She handpicked them to get these jobs. So all of this is politics. And what we need to have in Washington, D.C., those of us who live outside of Washington are looking at this mess and saying, why, why can't people see this? Where are the journalists who are pushing back and, and challenging those people who are in government? You're supposed to have reporters who uh, are courageous and who speak to power, and they speak truth to power. We have a whole bunch of journalists right now who are the envy of dictators around the world, because the whole system in Washington is just a bunch of bobbleheads for the ruling party. It's really sad, and it's going to ruin our country. If the rest of us outside of Washington don't stand up, get involved, and say enough is enough, we want common sense. Bring back common sense. Right. I agree. Um, OK, I don't have any time left. I got one quick question. It's a yes or no for both of you. Does this case against Donald Trump ever see a courtroom? Rick Grinnell, yes or no, does it see a courtroom? No. Matt Whitaker, does this case ever actually see a courtroom? No, it's dismissed by the end of the year. Dismissed What's by the amazing end of is the year. that I, I actually am not a lawyer, and the brilliant lawyer went after me, and he agreed with me. Can we just make that for the record, right, my friend Matt? <laughs> I'll take the brilliant That's, lawyer well, part off the, the record. Thank you. Yeah. The best part is you don't need to be a lawyer, although I do have, I hold Matt in the highest esteem to see how flimsy this case is. Anyway, gentlemen, we appreciate your time today.